Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be talking about Jesus goes to the temple. Jesus cleaning out the temple uh, as it is recorded in the book of Luke. We are reading verses 45 through 48. Let's start reading verse 45. He entered into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer. That's Isaiah 56, verse 7. But you have made it a den of robbers. Jeremiah 7, 11. He was teaching daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the leading men among the people sought to destroy him. Why did they seek to destroy him? Because Jesus was always calling out their sin. He was always pronouncing woes. Can I say even curses upon these people? And Jesus wasn't this loving, love, love, love and grace and love and grace kind of guy that you hear so much in Christianity today. They have what I call a golden calf Jesus. No, he, this is the true Jesus. This is what we are reading here is the Bible. This is what every church should be reading. This is what every pastor should be talking about on Sunday morning. They, sh they should be talking about how Jesus really was. Not sugarcoating it, buttering it over, you know, buttering it up, so to speak. But, but telling people the truth. But they don't like to do that, you see, because oh, they might... And they might make someone on the board, the church board, uh, angry, and they might get fired from their job. They might say things that would that other people might like or might might not like, and they might not come back to church next Sunday. That means they're not going to give money either. Hmm. Jesus wasn't a guy who cared about what people think. Not at all. He cared about what God thought. He cared about what his father thought. He, he said, I'm not, he didn't say, I'm here to do the board's will. I'm, I'm here to do the will of the church staff. I'm here to do your will. I'm here to tickle your ears and, and make you feel good and to make you feel lifted up and all nice and cozy and warm and loved. Not at all. Not even slightly. He came to define sin when it needed to be defined, identify sin where it needed to, to, to be identified, to point it out, and to call people to repentance. He said that himself over and over again. Verse 48, they couldn't find what they might do, for all the people hung on to every word that he said. There was something about this Jesus that people knew he was a special, special man. Yes, in, indeed, he was a special man. Otherwise, he would have been long gone, long forgotten. I encourage you, as you read through the so-called New Testament, to stick, first and foremost, stick to the words in red, so to speak. Stick to the words of Jesus. After the words of Jesus, go for the words of Peter, James, and John, because these, Peter, James, and John, they were closer to Jesus than anybody. Jesus let them in on the inside scoop, on, you, know, you know, the inside circle, the premium club, even more than the nine. So first, let's get, let's get the priority straight. Let's get the hierarchy straight now, you know, on the top here. Remember when we were talking about New Testament uh, scriptures here on the top is G, the, the words of Jesus, the words in red. Underneath that, the words of Peter, James, and John. Underneath that, the words of the other nine. And underneath that, we can go with other things such as the words of Paul and other things like that. Hey, let's look at it for what it really is. The letters of Paul are the letters of Paul. Are they written to us? No. Can we take a lot of wisdom from it? Yes. Is there a lot of truth in it? I would say so. But you got to take it for what it really is. Take it in context. Same with everything. You know, you got to ask questions. And I got I got a whole teaching on that too. You know, 10 questions you must ask when studying the Bible. 
do a search on that. And in the meantime, as you seek God, as you meditate upon his word day and night, may God give you revelation, understanding, insight beyond that which you can even imagine. You know, there is insight and revelation so much so that there are things that God can show you that is so powerful that you can't even talk about them. And I pray that each one of you has that experience. Thanks again for watching and God bless you as you seek his face and pursue him like never before. Thanks again.